Welcome back to another Shamshir Sound video. Today we're talking about aligning samples to the grid, making sure that we get rid of that little bit of pre-delay in case you're going through a library of kicks in this case and there's a delay and you don't want that and you want the kick to start right at the beginning of each bar. In this case, it's very important because dance music is revolving around the kick, so the decisions that you make are all centered around the kick. Now, of course, with other samples, other percussive elements, vocals, things like that, it might not be as important when you have a negligible amount of pre-delay. But for this kick, if we can make it start right smack at the beginning of each bar, that would be great. So we're gonna go over some of those options. If you guys are enjoying these quick videos, remember to smash up the like button and let's get started. So here we have a spin-in drum loop, the kick. I don't really care that it's a loop because it's the same sample over and over pretty much. And we can see, especially in the beginning, there's a lot of delay before the transient kicks in. One option would be to double click on the sample and under sample start offset, we can adjust a percentage to get that a little bit more on the dot. So that's some progress because if we reset this, it's really bad there, that's the default. If we bring this a little bit over here, but you can see how it starts to bleed into the previous bar. So that's problematic. Let's go ahead and type in the value. We could type in something like 0.16. Okay, that's a little bit better and we might be able to roll with that. So you can also dial in the value. The shorter the sample, the more granular control you'll get with sample start offset. I'll show you what I mean. So with this sliced kick, I'm gonna make this unique. And now with the sample start offset percentage, it can give me a little bit more fine control. Notice I'm dragging my mouse up, but I'm getting very, very granular control because since the sample is shorter, I have a longer range, a longer delta to deal with in terms of customizing that. Then we can get in very close and there we go. And this looks a lot better to me, right? Let me know what you guys think. This looks a lot better to me than the bar above where there's that pre-delay. Pre-delay is cool and we'll talk about pre-delay in future videos with snares and pre-snares and things like that. But with this, this is the king, right? And the king needs to start first. It needs to punch through. I don't want something else punching through and then the kick having a little bit of delay, messing with side chain, messing with different volume envelopes that we're making. So that is solution two. Solution one, the sample start offset. Type it in if you can't get as granular as you can because of the length of the sample. Solution two, of course, cut it, make it unique. And now with your shorter sample, you can get more granular with sample start offset. There's one more option that with the original sample can get you some pretty crazy results, but just be mindful that it could just wreck your CPU. And that is time base. We talked about time base in optimizing FL Studio 21, but if you bump this up, to like 960. Time base is responsible for events and the resolution, and it takes a big toll on your CPU. So use this at your own discretion. But you notice how everything got zoomed in, and now all of a sudden the slip with no snap, notice how granular I can get with that. Bam, leaving a little bit, a little bit of that space there. Nice and very, very nice. And you see, I can just get in there very granular. This is actually the first time, guys, that I bumped up the resolution to 960 from 96. And here we're seeing how we can reap the benefits. And perhaps what you could do is if you don't want to leave it at 960, because I'm going to bump it back to 96. I don't need my archaic 4770K processor getting wrecked. I could bounce this, throw it back in here, and voila, we'd be good to go. So there's a lot that you can do with a variety of options. So in case you can't use the slip tool, try bumping up the PPQ. If not, use sample start offset. Another option, of course, would be bringing this into Edison, but I feel like that has a little bit more friction and would be more destructive and leave you with a lot more data. So I'm gonna switch back my time base to 96. And we can see when we do that, switching it back to 96, um, what we can notice is that it also, as a result of that, like we lose that benefit again. You can see that all the way to the right, slip comes all the way to the right, looks terrible. And when we bring it to the left, it's okay here, but one more and it just goes even 
bleeding into the previous bar. So let me know what you guys think about these techniques. Are there other methods that you guys use to align your samples when you need to be very granular, really dial it in and make it precise? If you guys are enjoying these videos, remember to smash up the like button, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and that way you're alerted of the daily uploads. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.